Welcome back to another episode. Today, I want to take a closer look at three semiconductor companies that I do believe can benefit from a lot of changes happening in the semiconductor market, and obviously one of those being the huge push into the AI space. Uh, so like I mentioned, today we're going to take a closer look at three stocks, and if you're not familiar, this is the best place you're going to find any semiconductor news. So before we go anywhere, make sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button, and let's get started. So as you might have guessed, the first company I am going to talk about is ASML Holdings. And in the past, uh, this past Friday, we did see kind of a weakness in the semiconductor market. Um, I recently did a video. Make sure to check that out if you want to know what happened within the semiconductor space. Um, but we can see ASML is down roughly 4% right now, sitting at those $600 price points. Year to date, the stock is up a measly 8.5%, where most of the market, especially let's take a closer look at the semiconductor index um, is up roughly year to date is up roughly 39.64 uh, so I do believe ASML to be kind of a market performer um, and it's not doing it's not doing so at the moment and for that reason this has made my case or has made my list right so ASML first for those that are not familiar with ASML this is a company that designs a very very important equipment needed for the semiconductor manufacturing so so they create what is called a lithography machine, and the, this lithography machine comes in two flavors. First, you have your DUV, which is your deep ultraviolet, and these are used to kind of design chips that are above 7 nanometers, right? Um, then you have your extreme ultraviolet machines, and this is where ASML has this huge, huge monopoly in, and these are machines that sell for $200 million, right? These EUVs are used to create your advanced semiconductors, those within your 7 nanometer and below. And right off the bat, if you understand or if you follow the semiconductor market, you might understand who are some of their big players or some of their big customers. Their big customers are the semiconductor manufacturing players like TSMC, Intel, and Samsung. All right, so now I want to kind of explain a little bit more of why I'm bullish. Obviously, they have great technology, but obviously another important point in investing is valuation and kind of getting great performance over time. So for me, ASML normally is a company that we can see in the past year either outperforms the semiconductor market or at least trails the semiconductor market. And in the past few months, it actually has underperformed. And I do believe that is kind of creating a nice long-term buying opportunity for investors. So we can see in the past year, ASML is underperforming. Year to date, it's completely, completely underperforming the market. And like I mentioned, normally I would say this is one that completely outperforms or at least trails the semiconductor space. And right now for a completely underperforming, performing, I do believe is giving maybe long-term buyers a good opportunity. Um, if we take a closer look, ASML is kind of forward. PE ratio is kind of 28. Um, forward one year is roughly 25. Nothing too crazy. We can see historically in the past five years, ASML always trades at a high valuation. Um, before the COVID peak, it was kind of trading in those high to uh, high high to mid 20s and that's where it's at right now so it's nothing too too crazy in my opinion we are seeing kind of a lot of headwinds at least in the moment for asml and i do believe maybe this is why the market might be underappreciating it we did see some reports earlier this week or, or late this week that asml stock drops as there are reports that tsmc is postponing deliveries um, due to kind of maybe a stronger weakness in the semiconductor than previously anticipated. While this is true, it's not something that, I mean, we heard from ASML earnings. They did mention something like that, that, hey, they are seeing kind of a slowdown because some facilities are kind of being delayed to some extent. So those products are being shipped to later, are, are, are being are being shipped off to their customers in later quarters. Um, it's not like ASML is losing those customers it's not like they're gonna lose out on that revenue it's just being pushed back a little bit so for me it's nothing for a long-term investor to worry 
ASML also mentions that obviously there's still numerous secular growth drivers in the semiconductor market, things like electrification, AI, along with increasing lithography intensity on future technology nodes. We know that we're going from, hey, right now, five nanometers, we're getting to the three nanometers mass value production right now. We heard from Apple and their three nanometer chip. In the future, we're going to go to two nanometer, 1.8 nanometer, and the list continues to get smaller and smaller, and lithography machines are going to be very, very important for that. Another thing that we know is numerous countries and numerous companies are expanding their fabrication plants worldwide. We know, for example, Intel is building a lot in Arizona and Ohio. We know TSMC is building in Arizona, in Taiwan, in Japan, um, in Europe as well. Intel is also building in Europe. So the list goes on and on. So there's a huge market right now, at least for semiconductor equipment companies. Another thing is com uh, ASML, we can see average diluted shares outstanding compared to the past three years continues to go down. The company also continues to buy back shares on a quarterly basis. So that is very, very beneficial for this company as well. Uh, finally, the final reason is they are producing their next generation of EUV machines and this is going to be the high NA EUV tool and this is going to be used for things like 2 nanometers and below and there are reports that this is one that's going to be shipping at roughly $300 million per scanner. I think this is insane because that's one machine. There are certain semiconductor equipment companies that barely make this amount of revenue per quarter, yet alone per year. Uh, and it's crazy that ASML can actually make that revenue with one machine. So obviously we can see the strength of their products and that's why ASML is the first one on my list and they can definitely benefit from this huge kind of market as we need more advanced chips for things like AI and as chips continue to get smaller. So now we're gonna take a closer look at my second company. But before we go there, guys, we just hit 28,000 subs. I wanna say thank you. I wanna hit 30,000 by the end of the year so if you haven't make sure to hit the subscribe thumbs up i do have a semiconductor membership i do have a master's degree in electrical engineering and i used to work at some pretty cool places now i'm pretty much just relaxing and i kind of doing youtube now and, and enjoying life so i do have this membership program where i do exclusive videos make sure to click join to learn more and those exclusive videos check out fool.com slash jose for special offer jose naharo substack.com for free newsletter semiconductor watch dot com for semiconductor news and finally finally i want to thank the motley fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now with that link you get a promotional offer for the subscription service now let's continue with today's episode all right so the second company we're going to take a closer look at is amd and obviously this is one of my favorites this is actually my number two position in my portfolio year to date the stock is up roughly 58 percent uh, market cap of 163 billion dollars so for those that are not familiar with amd they do have products for different markets the data center they have gpus cpus fpgas dpus for the client market they have their cpus like their ryzen i'll, I'll talk a little bit about them for their gaming market they do have gpus for laptops for desktops they also make semi-custom chips for the xbox and the playstation and then the embedded market they have FPGAs and adaptive system on chips, as well as embedded CPUs and GPUs for a huge broad market like the financial market, the healthcare market, the aerospace market, the automotive market. Uh, just a quick look for those that are not familiar. You might hear if you're owning a computer, right? They have CPUs and GPUs that go within the computer. Very similar. They go on laptops as well. In the data center market, they have like the CPUs as well, um, but more for server and data centers. They just recently released their fourth generation Genoa, and that's doing really well. Here we can see kind of that solution going into the data center market. Now, if we take a closer look, I also wanted to compare this to the semiconductor index, right, SOXX. One thing that I do want to say is while it is performing to the market, for me, AMD is one that I believe can outperform the market. And that is why I believe I'm more bullish on on on, on AMD right now. We can see in the past year, it's kind of meeting, um, it's underperforming by a bit, um, by a little bit, a few percentage points compared to SOXX. And again, I do believe this is one that can outperform the market overall. Um, if we take a closer look as well, right, let me just kind of go back here. I kind of moved a little bit too forward. If we take a closer look year to date, 
AMD is outperforming the market on a year-to-date basis, but not by much. I do believe this is one that can completely, completely destroy uh, the semiconductor market. So for me, I am bullish for that reason. We can see right now the company is seeing a lot of headwinds with the semiconductor slowdown, especially in PC consumer electronics. Their PE ratio right now, I believe, is non-existent. I do believe on a gap basis they are negative. But if we take a closer look for forward, which is this current at the end of this year, two quarters from now, um, that PE ratio is going to be closer to 36. Forward one year is actually expected to be 24. So it's not an expensive company. Next, if we take a closer look at the AI market, I do believe there's huge growth in the data center space. They're doing really good with their fourth generation Epic processor, which is CPUs that are going into the data center market. They are gaining market share from Intel and they're continuing to do so. They also are expected to release a new kind of data center GPU, the MI300. While I don't believe they're going to be NVIDIA in here, I do believe they'll be able to take some crumbs from the AI space and some crumbs in the GPU market is a lot and a lot of money. Um, so if we take a closer look, we have reports that AMD's global server CPU market top at 25 percent uh so there's still a huge 75 percent available to them obviously there's competitive pressure from intel um, but i do believe at least for the moment they can continue continue to grab market share from the space uh like we saw like i mentioned their data center market is probably one of my favorite plays their client market is seeing a bit of a weakness because of that consumer slowdown but eventually this should turn around same with the gaming market the embedded market they mentioned that it is seeing a slowdown um in the upcoming quarters but this is one with very very high margins and this is thanks to like industrial automotive um um, emulations, uh, financial, healthcare, and the list goes, aerospace and defense. Uh, so a lot of, this is a company that's very diversified thanks to that silence acquisition. And that's why I have AMD on the list here. Now, the third stock we're going to take a closer look at is Marvell Technology, ticker RMRVL. Right now, market cap of roughly $47 billion. Year to date, the stock is up roughly 51.4%. Now, for those that are not familiar with Marvell, this is a company that provides data infrastructure pro products, mainly in kind of the networking solutions, right? They have things like um, DSPs, digital signal processors. They have um, processors that are used for DPUs. They have networking switches. They have automotive Ethernet switches as well. Uh, if we take a closer look at their quarterly revenue, we can see that, hey, look, there was a slowdown, but it does seem like it is bottoming out. Um, for the upcoming quarters, they do expect maybe some slowdown still in the automotive market and also maybe in the carrier infrastructure market. But we can see they do have a huge dependency in the data center space, which I am very bullish on, and the kind of um, automobile, even though it's seeing a bit of a slowdown, um, but we can see data center market is definitely a huge growth opportunity for them. Um, what I'm super excited about Marvell is I do believe they are a leader here in forms of technology. They are a semiconductor product, right? They design chips that go into these networking solutions. They have their five nanometer product. They're working on their three nanometer product. They work on things like multi-chiplet modules, co-package optics, in-package memory, which kind of showcases their lead in kind of technology um, solutions, right? And their kind of growth in this market and innovation. And if you want to learn a little bit more of how their AI or their products are being used in AI and why I believe there's a growth opportunity here is right now, AI infrastructure requires a nice amount of high bandwidth connectivity, and that can be provided only by optically connected infrastructure, something that Marvell is a player in with their optical DSPs, with their AECs. Um, and these are used for connecting accelerator clusters inside of AI data centers. They obviously also have Ethernet switches for things like fabric connectivity inside of data centers and custom silicon for compute accelerations, which they're seeing kind of maybe a lot of these players create kind of ASIC solutions using Marvell's technology. So there is a nice amount of growth opportunity here. While the AI market is small for them, the overall data center market is still strong. They do mention that they do expect um, their annualized revenue to be roughly $800 million on, a, on an annualized basis uh, for their AI market this year. Um, and that was something that they were expecting for next year. So they still are expecting continued outside growth from the AI space. 
Remember, AI Market plays a small portion of this company's total revenue at the moment, um, but it definitely has numerous growth opportunities. Uh, if we take a closer look, let me just kind of make this chart a little bit smaller. Marvell right now is underperforming SOXX. If we take a closer look in the past year, for that reason, I am bullish. I do believe this can be another one that outperforms the market. And right now is giving investors, especially those with the growth growth investment mentality a little bit more uh, of an opportunity. Maybe if you're more like a value play, Marvell is not your type of pick. If we take a closer look on the year-to-date basis, um, we can see that the stock is not is it, not is outperforming, but not by much. I do believe this is a company that can outperform dramatically on the overall market. Now, if we take a closer look at P.E. ratios, again, my apologies. Let me just make this smaller for us so it can be easier to read. Marvell's P.E. ratio right now is currently trading at 34. Forward one year is roughly 23. Again, nothing too, too crazy, especially if you want a mixture of growth and maybe some decent valuation. Uh, so these are the three companies that I'm keeping an eye out. I hope you guys enjoy it. Take care. Have a good day and see you next time.